Charlie Olivacetti. Did I do it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, with uh, Vicente Cedarberg. Yep. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, you guys are, uh, I'm not going to insult anybody by saying this, you're like the fir- the, the cannabis firm. We like, to think, we like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think so, too. Uh, before we came on, you were talking about how you got into practicing this type of law. Yep. Tell me about those early days, and then we'll get to where we are today. Yeah, sure. So, you know, I, I was uh, working in a lawyer uh, as a lawyer in New York. I worked at a series of big firms. I didn't particularly enjoy what I was doing for a living. You didn't like working in a big firm? Yeah, it's a shocking. Okay. First, first person in human history <laughs> not to like working in a big firm. And I was thinking to myself, well, you know, what, what should I do with my life? And, you know, I was looking at the sort of more senior lawyers that I thought had interesting lives. And I felt that, you know, a lot of people that had done interesting things with their lives had gotten, they had gotten in on the ground floor of something big, right? So, you know, I was in the private equity group and you look at these guys that sort of, you know, that was an interesting space when it was getting started and there was a lot of opportunity then for lawyers too. So I was looking around, what's new? Well, cannabis was sort of, Vaguely on the scene at the point, yeah, it was in 2013. Uh, you know, I'd always enjoyed cannabis, so I thought, you know, part of me was like, oh, this is cool, I could combine two things. So I, um, I randomly, uh, you know, I was starting to get involved in the industry, and I saw an ad on LinkedIn uh, a posting from a woman, Shaleen Title, who interestingly is one of the five cannabis commissioners in Massachusetts yeah. right now. So I reached out to her on Do you LinkedIn. Know her? Yeah, she was. So I was. I was actually the first placement she ever made oh, in, wow. her, in her in her in her company THC staffing. So I, you know, I talked to her, and then I talked to the guys. I talked to Christian Cedarberg, um, flew out to Denver, met the guys, and I said, you know, listen, I have been talking a big game. I got to do it. So I moved out to Denver in twenty in August twenty fifteen. You made a commitment. And uh, yeah, just just to focus one hundred percent on uh, cannabis deals. At the time, it was really just marijuana. There wasn't really any hemp action at the time. But now there is, of course. Oh, there's. A t- yeah, a I would say. That. I would say this past year, probably half our new clients are CBD yeah. or hemp. It's amazing. We share something in common. Okay. We're both from Massachusetts. Yeah. We share something else. We both lost our Massachusetts accents. That's true. I don't think I ever had one. I know I did. You did? Oh, I yeah. do when I watch the Red Sox and the Patriots. Okay. But other than that, I I, I have an elaborate shtick I like to run where I pretend as I have a few beers that it comes out a little bit, but it's all a facade. Uh, yeah, I have that too. Although at Thanksgiving with the family, it, uh, it certainly comes out. See, my, my family's not from Massachusetts. Oh, okay. It's like my dad's from New York. My mom's from Maryland. Okay. So I didn't really grow up. Well, I, I'm house. thick in it. Like we got the whole the only mass hole contingent. My... Uh, my sister, like her, her, um, her husband, so my brother-in-law, I guess, his side of the family, there's a lot of thick. Yeah. They were born in Cambridge. Yeah, there you go. There are a lot of, guys, a lot of people from Quincy. So yeah. they're like the only people at Thanksgiving that yeah. are authentic. That's, that's good. Authentic. They get to bring that authentic Massachusetts yeah. Thanksgiving out. So uh, you've been to the show before? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, and you're saying that in your firm, so in the firm, like you're saying the percentage has gone up dramatically around hemp and CBD. Yeah, I mean, I think we saw a huge, huge explosion in interest in hemp-derived CBD this year. Uh, tremendous amount of new clients. I, th- I think you see a lot of new clients because, in the legal space at least, because if it's an existing industry and existing companies, right, they've already got a lawyer, right? Yeah. But if it's a brand new company, brand new space, they don't know who to talk to. So. My partner, Sean Hauser, sort of built the hemp practice group, and she's done a great job of getting her name out there, and so people reach out to her, uh, and we've been helping people kind of navigate this craziness that is... It's uh, a brave see, new world. Yeah, see, it's nuts. It's not for the faint of heart, though. No, it's, it's, it's a little crazy, and I was actually just talking to your uh, co-founder yeah. about, you know, I, uh, I feel for a lot of our clients, because if, you, if you're trying to develop a CBD brand right now, how do you stick out in the crowd, right? What's your alpha, you know? Everyone kind of has access to the same things. Yeah, and then and then regulations change and supply chains are there or not, and it's uh it's, it's what I'm saying. It's not for the faint of heart. Right, right. Well, you're, you're you know like the FDA sends out warning letters yeah. and your investors get spooked. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's been a it's been a crazy year, and I think 2020 will be just as crazy. So that's actually what I want to ask you next. What do you think we'll be talking about at MJ BizCon 2020? So next December. So next December, I mean it, it's gonna. I, well, it's I know. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say. <laughs> I, I will, after 2016, I'm no longer making any political predictions there you about go. who wins an election. Good idea. So, uh, we'll be talking about the president and what the president's going to do because I think that'll drive it all. And We're going to be talking about the new president's going to do. Th- yeah, we're talking to the new president. 
And then I think if we have a new president, like Things legalization change. in 2021 is yeah. not out of the question yeah. and it's going to totally change everything. And I also think hopefully we'll be talking about New York's new bill. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, a handful of other states that have, yeah. that have legalized. That'll be exciting. Yeah. Like our home state of Massachusetts. That's true. Well, Massachusetts, I think, is, you know, a, a classic example. Of, you know, I, I think it's interesting that everyone blames on the Canadian side, right? Says, well, you know, our sales aren't good because it was slower to roll out than we anticipated. And it's like, well, name a market besides Oklahoma right. that has not been slow to roll out, right? Look at Massachusetts. I mean, they it's legalized barely. a while ago, and there's still there's no dispensaries in Boston. Yeah, right, right, which is nuts. And the one in Brookline is like apparently yeah. printing money. Like it's, yeah, it, it's it's what I think there may be thirty. Yeah, I, I don't know the number, but there's not a lot. But you can't get into them. You have to make reservations. It's crazy. Right, it's crazy. And I'm actually moving back to Massachusetts oh. in June of next year. Okay. Um, Are you making news? <laughs> I'm this breaking breaking <laughs> news. Dun dun dun. dun. Uh, yeah. So Massachusetts, I think, is like a uh, classic example of how it's, it's very challenging to roll out these new markets. Yes, it is. And that's that's a baseline everywhere. The same in Colorado, same in California, same in Massachusetts, same, in, Cal same in, in Canada. And that is the constant. It's different and challenging in all different kinds of ways. Yeah. But that is that is for sure. Well, I, I hope in the coming year we can connect outside of this conversation. Because I uh, wish you best of luck in your move back to Massachusetts. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, we'll see you at Thanksgiving. Um, but thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thanks for having Charlie, me. Charlie, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Great. Have a good one.